Quite frankly, this race is about three very simple things. It's about qualifications, partisanship, and the opportunity of all of us in this room and thousands of our fellow citizens in rooms like it all across this state to, sell, to tell outstate influences that we, citizens of this great state, of Wisconsin, we will decide who our judges and justices are. Thank you very much. This race, this race should be so obvious to any fair-minded individual who is looking at the job as that of a judge or a justice and not as a partisan. On the one hand, we have Justice David Prosser, a man who served as a district attorney and did so honorably. A man who served as a legislator and was rewarded after 18 years of service in the state legislature by his colleagues, the people who know him best, with the top job in the legislature, that of Speaker of the Assembly. And we have the fact, we have the fact that his opponent has dedicated her career. She has dedicated her entire career to the prosecution of environmental regulation violations. That's what she's done. She has gone after such terrible people and groups and individuals such as businesses, farmers, townships and other municipalities, and don't forget shoreland dock owners. That's it. I had the opportunity to debate Ms. Kloppenberg on Friday, and I looked her in the eye and I told her what I believe is the truth, and I tell you the same thing. Ms. Kloppenberg is the least qualified, most partisan candidate to run for the state Supreme Court in living memory. The only reason, and I said that, I'm not saying anything I didn't say to her on Friday. The only reason her campaign has any traction at all is that she is fostering the idea that she will vote against Scott Walker she will vote against the current legislature, and she will vote against the governor's budget repair bill at every opportunity. That's it. And I suggest, my friends, no matter what you think about the substance of that particular legislation or that governor or that legislature, that's not what a judge or a justice ought to be about. We are a republic. The people have the responsibility the people have the responsibility to elect their leaders who then go about doing the people's business. It is not for the judge or the justice to exercise policy decisions when it comes to legislative matters. We judges and justices are called upon to have a more modest role, and that is to apply the law, not make it. My friends, we are talking about not just the next few months or the next few years, we're talking about the next 10 years. We have 10-year terms for justices in this state. Let us turn back the tide which is rising on the other side towards an unqualified candidate who is running on a far-left political agenda of partisanship, and let us finally take the opportunity. On my way here, I heard reports of the fact that the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who has been, all of a sudden, has taken quite an interest in the dairy state, and I can't help but wonder if that doesn't have a little something to do, not only with our Supreme Court, but also with something coming up in November of 2012. Why else? Why is he here? Why is he leading marches from churches on the north side of Milwaukee of hundreds of people to the voting booths to get them to vote for Justice Prosser's opponent? That is what Jesse Jackson, and I've been receiving reports from people who've been there of Illinois license plates. Let us turn back this far left outside influence. This race is closer, much closer than the merits of the candidates and their ideas would ever call for. But that presents us with a wonderful opportunity, and I will close with this. My friends, the, the challenge has been laid out. The gauntlet is down. It is up to us whether we are going to do our part. This race, the reason I'm here, 
this race is going to come down to each and every person in this room and thousands of people just like us. It is up to we, the citizens. We can talk about campaigns and we can talk about groups that are running television ads, but at the end of the day, the founders of this country put the responsibility for the governance, governance of the citizens of this country in our own hands. If we abdicate it, well, then I guess we get what we deserve. I need you. Our state needs you. To, I've been asking people all for the last couple of months. It's very simple. I need you, we need you, to step out of your comfort zone. It's good you're here. It's great you're here taking an interest. Every person in this room needs to do something that they haven't, maybe haven't done before. Use your email list. Use your telephone directory. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your colleagues. This is it. I mean, the truth is, if they succeed in taking David Prosser up, a man who has deserved and earned a reputation as a judicial conservative, not legislating from the bench, but simply applying the law, and they replace him with an unqualified partisan, well, then we get four black robed masters who will serve as veto power over everything the governor and the legislature does, whether it's this governor and this legislature, or governors and legislatures yet to be elected. I'm begging you, my friends, do your part. Let us turn the outside people back and let us take control of our own government. Thank you for allowing me to talk. Thank you for listening. May God bless each and every one of you.